Today I'm up at our larger site working on a few different projects. Right now I'm sited near that larger pond that we dug a few winters ago. I talked about that recently in a video. What I'd like to focus on today a bit is this area behind me. It's kind of a little bit rough, uh, rough sketch of hugel mounds and beds on contour. I want to take it a little bit further and prep some beds and talk about that whole process. In digging this pond, we used a skid steer so that we could skim off the first layers of topsoil and deposit it nearby. So this is on the north of the pond. This is deposition of some of that topsoil in a pretty rough pile. We dumped some logs and things first, and then topsoil. This last season, we grew a bronze fennel in this raised bed and some good King Henry. So these two beds were functional as nursery beds. Pretty weedy early on. I think it was kind of, could have been better to be in a cover crop or more thoroughly prepped, but worked well enough. We're gonna leave those alone. But what I did is queued up with Juan and our friends the other day some slabs of locust and I'm going to take EMT conduit pipe hoops and make uh, raised beds with locust walls out of this material which is really promising super rich but got kind of weedy. Let me go get those EMT pipes so that we have the basic ingredients we need. I've got these experiments. I never actually really use them. It seemed like a promising idea. I think I probably will just take them apart but it's locust rails that have EMT hoops with the idea that it could be these mobile sleds, you'd put poly over them. But I never quite used them because I couldn't get past the idea of, well, I set them up and then a good windstorm comes, these would fly away very easily. So at some point I'll unscrew the EMT and reclaim all this and probably use those locusts for garden beds. But that gives you a rough idea of what these beds will look like, but these aren't quite it. I've cached a nice pile of bent half-inch EMT over here. It's always worthwhile keeping in communication with local farms. This whole stack, I think it cost me about 60 bucks or so. They sold these for $2 a piece. I think right now straight runs of 10 foot EMT brand new is somewhere between seven and nine dollars a piece. So pretty amazing deal. I talked about how we bend these. They must have used a hoop bender because these are very, very clean. Uh, but we can use these, push them into the ground, push them into the ground, and then lay in uh, bark facing in slab wood cuts of locust and then infill that so these would hold up the raw ingredients of a raised bed and since they're sitting here in the landscape i might as well put them to use they are not light i'm a bit winded for carrying them over that's part of the beauty of these they are galvanized metal they can really withstand uh, intense amounts of wind when they're pushed into the ground and they should last for decades but here we got about 20 of them and this spot over here i want to start figuring out four foot beds roughly on contour. One hoop is in. All of this is malleable and once we dig out the bronze fennel and the good King Henry, I plan on reshaping those beds anyway. But this feels like a nice start. It kind of frames the bulk of a bed that's here and it can go more or less right down this line. And then we can start harvesting material on either side of it, robbing the walkways, robbing the neighbor bed, burying logs to turn this into a proper hugel situation. Let me put a, f a few more hoops in. Certainly a little slow and awkward at first to just get that basic idea. I use some longer runs of locusts so that I have a cleaner line to figure out whether or not I am getting a proper line through here. So the hoops will have to adjust a bit, but I think that line right down this whole line should be reasonable enough. Maybe I'll set in one more section or two, make sure I feel comfortable with it, and then start the actual Hugo Mound building. I like that as a basic framework. Now certainly if I didn't have the EMT conduit, I'd be very, very happy just to simply pound in sharpened staves of hardwood. I could even harvest hazelnut boughs and locust boughs in the woods, 
sharpen them with a hatchet and knock them in with a wooden maul. The EMT I have, and it holds the option of me putting fencing over these to protect the beds. A lot of deer move through this part of the property, so since I have the EMT and there's deer and there's the possibility of putting poly over them to uh, do season extension, I might as well use them, but I'm not suggesting you do that instead of wood if that's what you can find. Now I'd like to go through and start actually building the content of this bed. First order of business, I'll dig some of the weeds that are in there, flip them upside down just to bury them. Uh, the whole point of this in part is to have high fertility and to have a really low weed pressure. So where there are perennial weeds, I'd like to dig them, flip them, then build up. So we'll go from there. Next order of business is to start filling with rotten logs. If I was starting fully from scratch, I could dig this out and set it aside and infill, but I've got lots of other bulk material all around. There's logs and debris, there's weeds, there's all sorts of things to fill this with a bit. So I might as well just do that. Grabbing rotten logs and debris, dead decaying material. This is a place where stones can get thrown in. Where there are weediness patches or what have you, I was throwing some uh, waste hay. We had some bales of hay out here. We could certainly use grass clippings or leaves. I might rake up some pine cones as an infill so there's not huge gaps in between these logs. But that's the workflow I like to use is to start infilling with debris. You know, these were rough thrown in walkways. All the rot out there eventually, but it makes it hard to walk through there. So in the bed, they can be buried and be useful forever. In the walkway, we have to do something with them. So they go in. I notice Virginia creepers running really intensely through here. So it's an opportunity to dig that vine out and let it bake in the sun and freeze. It can be biomass later on, but I do not want to bury live roots, especially of really strong growing plants. In the early stages here, I'll just be propagating them. Super rough sketch, but the transition is starting to reveal the woody debris centered into the bed. And the nice part about having either pounded in staves or something like hoops is once I've got enough material, so now these uh, scrap pieces of wood, these could be logs from the woods or branches, they're now pinned up against the upright support. Once this layer is full, I can add in more of these random slabs or branches and in other words, let the bed go as tall as I want. I generally like to go two courses, so about maybe 18 inches initially. It'll settle immensely, but if I can load the beds with the woody debris and then really cap them with some nice soil, they both break down, they settle, but they also provide a nice yield in the first year. More hoops and sticks or um, edges so that I can have the framework and this bed will have the start of a good layout. I'm pleased with that as a basic rough sketch. It feels relatively straight. The beauty of using slab wood or branches or pallets or cardboard or, 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 you know, rolled waste hay, whatever you want to do for the boundaries, it can move as it goes. There's not like 16 foot long rigid poles that have to be perfectly straight. These can flex in and out. And if you're pounding posts, even better, you can make curves as easily as you'd like. We've got some hugel debris in the middle there more sketch to the end, probably one more section uh, four feet to the edge, and that's the length of this bed. And now that this will be defined, I can then dig the walkway out on upslope and downslope, turn those into swales, and pattern the next beds on this layout so that we've got nice, clean, straight pathways to move through.
It's amazing how much a raised bed, when you put the sidewalls on, how much more material you can add in. Of course, I could fill this with soil, but then I look around and I see, okay, here is the top of a Scots pine. We had a pretty wild windstorm recently. This was a dead tree. If I were to go through with an electric chainsaw, handsaw, all of this could be laid into that bed, even the trunk. You know, technically we could go and mill that, but it's got lots of little bug holes. The stump and the trunk could be folded right into a garden bed, hidden forever, and be generating delicata squash this fall. The white pine in this landscape had a massive seed year this year. And so under a lot of them are these carpets of pine cones. By all accounts, I could just leave this and let it return to the soil under the pine. That would be just fine. But it's also an opportunity to tidy this up as well. I could rake up this woody debris, the random stem fall from the winter, rather than grinding it, burning it, uh, etc. Where there might be little overwintering larvae of bees and spiders and things like that. They can be laid into these hugel mounds at a very short distance away, right over there and provide woody biomass for the long haul, and little creatures can still sprout and grow and leave and do their ecosystem work. Not to say that I need to tidy this up, but if I had the interest aesthetically in tidying this up, it would have a short commute to be a very functional destination. I imagine this Hugel Mound running right where it is, taking more soil from what was a strangely shaped bed last year. This will be capping material for this. And then another Hugel Mound with the same treatment, EMT, and um, lab, uh, slab wood slices somewhere in here where it's already a raised bed. That would make for a wider walkway than is necessary. But what I could do for the first season is either grow crops in here where I can periodically harvest soil and throw that on. So for example, squash, I could take this soil throughout the season, slowly harvest more and more of it while pinning down those vines and helping them root. Could do potatoes, although this context is great for voles, so that would be dangerous. Or I could work this soil up and do something like a row of sunflowers or some other crop down the middle and have permanent raised bed, tillage or, uh, you know, broad forked regime with minor walkways and another permanent raised bed. Lots of options. And then in the future, I could always pull these EMT, redo this somewhere else and probably reclaim these side rails to build a bed like this elsewhere. None of this is permanent. There's no tools. There's no screw gun. So I can just move this in a year or five or 20 years if I want to. I'm in about a half hour of work, I think in total, maybe a little bit more, 45 minutes, to get this bed really nicely started. And then this bed, I just put the poles in, the conduit just enough to hold in the logs. You can see there's a little bit of a little bit of turn here. Used a wooden mallet, <laughs> another piece of wood, to pound in a stake, so that's a nice place to be able to make turns. Could still stretch poly over this if needed. Uh, but this way the bed follows a bit more the reality of the layout in here. I'd like to be able to come through with a riding mower or a garden cart and have good generous access through here so the beds will have to stop there. This second one is built right on a spot where we've been dumping debris for a while anyway. So rather than having to start from scratch, there's old bamboo, there's logs. Cool, we can just go up from there and use this as an opportunity to clean up debris and material from around. And then once we dig up the plants, the bronze fennel and good King Henry in here, we have ample soil to finish capping both beds. Took a break to do some other things, have lunch, and now I'm back at it in the afternoon here. I'm gonna take an electric chainsaw. We use this uh, Greenworks 80 volt stuff because we have a 
riding mower and a push mower, all different gear that runs on that and works pretty nicely, and use it to buck up the top of this tree that fell over in a windstorm. Some of it has gotten into some trees we care about. There's some persimmons and um, English oaks or English walnuts over there, and all that material can get folded into those beds. But first I should slice it up a little. Electric chainsaw is nice for me, gas chainsaw fine, that's great. But I also am very happy to use a tool like this, a folding saw and loppers and certainly an ax on things like softwood could be a nice way to break them down. I'll transition from here into all hand tool, break down the rest of that stuff over there and start laying it into this bed in particular. This could use more material and then we can cover it with soil later. A couple of hours work for a really nice framework here. EMT hoops, entirely optional. We just happen to have them. Nice to use if you do have them. But like I mentioned before, here's an ash that came down. We could split that and sharpen that with a hatchet. Those could be the staves that hold up the branches that hold up the hugel mount. I might finish here, do a little bit more uh, harvesting of soil to cover the logs before I leave for the day. The nice thing about this, it's early February, I'm just chipping away at it on a nice melted day. It'll freeze again, thaw again, and we can just keep chipping away at it. And this growing season will look for fertile pockets to uh, really put our focus, our priority, and then the rest we can fill in as we go. We'll document more. This is phase one of setting up some hugel mounds on contour-ish in the woods in the winter. <laughs> 